Hello learners, I am Anju Segal Gupta and today I am going to talk on meetings 2. We have already studied the meaning of meetings in a previous unit, in a previous PowerPoint. We have studied about its importance and the rules governing meetings. In this unit, we will talk about some other things, more details about meeting, including motion, resolution. We will also explain the meaning of what is an amendment. We will understand rules of voting in a meeting. We will explain to you the importance of minutes of meetings and we will also describe drafting of minutes. So, you will get to know almost everything you need to know about meetings by the end of this video. Now, let's begin with motions, amendments and resolutions. What is the primary function of a meeting? It is to translate business of the agenda and arrive at decisions based on the deliberations of the members present. This involves consideration of motions or proposals relating to items on the agenda, the debate that happens, the discussion that happens on the motion. Then there could be amendments that may be proposed and the motion along with the amendments, if any, is voted and then there is a formal resolution. Now let's talk about motions first. A motion is a proposition or proposal of on any item that is there on the agenda and a motion may be regarded as a proposed resolution which can be altered or amended if so desired by the members before it is put to vote. Now what are the conditions required for the motion to be valid? A motion should be put in writing, it should be dated and signed by the mover. If it is permitted by the chairperson, it can be also verbally placed before the meeting for discussion. However, before its final adoption as a resolution, it has to be written in black and white. A motion also has to be duly seconded by some other member. However, when a chairperson moves a motion, it need not be seconded. Those are the privileges of the chairperson. Then a motion must be within the scope of the meeting and relevant to the business on the agenda. So you cannot just talk of, on any subject. It has to be relevant to the agenda. It should be normally positive or affirmative, but it can be sometimes negative. Uh, we've given you an example. It normally begins with the word that, though nowadays there are other ways of doing this. And it should be constructed in such a way that it can be formally adopted as a re resolution. It should be clear and unambiguous. The motion or the resolution cannot contain any argument, interference or any defamatory expression. And the motions should be moved in the order of business which is set out on the agenda. All motions are to be handed over to the chairpersons unless the rules prescribe that those motions have to be sent by a certain date to the secretary. No formal notice of a motion on procedural matter is necessary. So, 
and then when do you think motions are not required to be sent when there is an appointment or election of a chairperson when there is rectification of typing errors if any when there is a motion for condolence or congratulations for adjournment or closure of meeting for the adoption of the minutes of the previous meeting or the accounts and of course vote of thanks to the chair okay so then motions are not required there can be also the withdrawal of motion the mover of the motion has a right to speak on the motion okay the mover of the motion has a right to speak on the motion the motion can be withdrawn before it is put to vote that is up to the mover and but once it is put to vote it cannot be withdrawn now what is the procedure for moving a motion you know all these are very important in your business setup so that is why we are taking the trouble to give you in so much detail so that you don't make any mistakes when you are working or if you're already working in a company if the notice of motion is already given the chairperson asks the mover to formally move his or her motion in the absence of notice the proposer of the motion may arise and with permission of the chairperson formally introduce the motion if the bylaws so require the motion has to be seconded immediately otherwise the chairperson may allow the mover to speak for a while and then can afterwards ask for seconding of the motion but a good idea to have your motion seconded immediately if seconded then future discussion on the motion is allowed if not then the motion is grounded after adequate discussions including any discussion on the amendments the motion is put to vote and the members can vote for or against it or be neutral if the motion is passed it becomes the resolution of the meeting so then it is like something that is resolved after due discussion so i hope that is clear where motions is concerned now let's talk about amendments and amendment is an alteration which is proposed in terms of a motion any member can propose an addition omission substitution of words figures names or any other term on the original motion before it is put to vote okay and i'm making this clear an amendment is not intended to be a substitute for the original motion it improves its wordings or if there is a you know something that needs to be added it adds to the motion so you can add certain words to the original motion for example that the words exclusive of all alliance must be added after the words rupees 500000 by omitting certain words in the original motion that is words like leasing may be omitted by substituting certain words in the original motion the words should be should be substituted by must be by inserting certain words in the original motion that the words university of delhi should be inserted after the name of the college and by other grammatical or changing the position of some words or even if you have something to add to the motion now how do you handle amendments when an amendment is moved to an original motion the chairperson has to accept it and the discussion on the or original motion is stopped okay and discussion on the amendment takes place 
mostly though it is not always the case only persons who have not spoken on the main motion are allowed to speak though nowadays others can also speak and after sufficient discussion the chairperson puts the amendments to vote if the motion if the amendment is carried it is incorporated in the main motion if it is defeated then the discussion on the original motion is revived so i hope that is clear all amendments to the same motion are taken up one by one and at any time only one amendment is discussed if an amendment is passed by voting it does not mean that the main motion is accepted it is necessary that a fully amended motion should be put to vote again for its acceptance or rejection by the meeting is that clear now we go on to resolutions very important because that this is what the meeting is all about that you have resolution so a resolution is a motion which is carried by the majority of persons present at the meeting and voting in the meeting it expresses the formal will or opinion of the meeting of the people at the meeting if the motion is the beginning a resolution is the end of a matter put before the meeting once the motion turns into the resolution it becomes binding on the body including the disagreeing minority provided of course that the resolution is lawful and not contrary to the rules of the body concerned so even if you disagree with the motion and you are in the minority but it becomes binding on you if a resolution is passed a resolution should have no ambiguity or vagueness it should be clear exact and stated in the affirmative usually the words resolve that precede the main part of the resolution so now i'll talk, give you some specimen resolution of a sports club so resolved that a subcommittee with the secretary as convener be appointed by the chairperson to organize a football tournament and so on resolved that the audited annual accounts for 2018 2019 and the auditors report thereon be and are hereby adopted now the resolutions passed in the meeting should be duly recorded in the minute book in the same form as it is a permanent record of decisions taken at the meeting they can be filed with the registrar or any other appropriate authority if required under the relevant law so i hope this is very clear because this is very important now interruptions sometimes when a debate progresses some members interrupted with a view to seek clarification alteration on a motion and this is known as interruption of the debate and the chairperson has to be very careful here because sometimes uh, uh people interrupt just to waste the time or because they don't want a resolution to take place so the chairperson is very strict uh in these matters so the debates are interrupted for various purposes amendments that are suggested and we've already talked about that uh any member can rise with the permission of the chairperson and interrupt the debate by proposing an amendment and after is in its introduction discussion on the main motion is suspended till the amendment is disposed of and we've talked about this then we come to the point of order a point of order is an interruption to draw the chairperson's attention to a to any irregularity of procedure or some other point it can be raised by any member at any moment during a meeting um uh, and uh, when something they feel is contrary to the general rules and procedures 
relating to the conduct of the meeting. Now, when do you think these points of orders are raised? Obviously, on the absence of the quorum. So, if at any time during the conduct of the meeting, if some people, if it is the meeting is short of the person's presence, uh, so as required by the bylaws of the association, then the attention of the chairperson may be a point of order. On a motion, if a motion or an amendment to a motion is not within the scope of the meeting, a point of order may be raised by any member. On the breach of standing order or rules, when the organization has standing orders or rules regarding the procedures or conduct of a meeting, and if this is not adhered to, the member, members can draw the attention of the chair by raising a point of order. For example, if a motion needs a proper seconding and it is not done, so it can be discussed without having been seconded. If anybody uses abusive language or misbehaves, then there is a point of order. And on procedural formalities that I've already talked about, that is uh, for some reason the chairperson has overlooked uh, some rules or there is whispering during the discussion or some people are holding a private conversation loudly or whatever of you know which where the chairperson needs to exercise his or her authority then you can the member can raise a point of order then the closure when enough discussion has taken place now you cannot go on endlessly so a closure motion may be moved so, if on a particular motion, a lot of discussion has taken place, then a closure motion may be moved. And any member may rise and move that the question be now out. This motion is known as closure or gag. This need not be seconded unless the bylaws so provide. Now, we'll talk of adjournment. Adjournment means a postponement with the object of resuming in the future. So, adjournment can be of a discussion or it can be of the meeting itself. For example, in a debate, a particular motion may be postponed if it is felt that some more information is needed or some more time is required for consideration to come to a sound decision. And a motion may be moved and seconded. So, should be some kind of specifying the time and date of resumption. And uh, if the motion is carried, the debate on the original motion is stopped until the time specified. If the motion falls, the original motion is revived. Okay. Now, adjournment of a meeting. Adjournment of a meeting is the act of discontinuing a meeting with the objective of resuming it at a later date. So, the meeting can be postponed for a specified time for an indefinite period and ordinarily no notice is necessary for the adjourned meeting but if the rules so specify or the members agree then the notice specifying the date time and place may be issued so this is about adjournment of meetings so uh, the motion of adjournment takes place in the following circumstances due to want of quorum due to disorder when one has to take a poll and on the depart demand of the members. For example, you know, it is the end of the day, people are tired and they're ready to come the next day. Or if it is a lunch break or, you know, some kind of a, or as, as we mentioned earlier, because they need to get some more data. Now, a very, very important part of any meeting is the voting procedures and methods. And it's an important aspect of a meeting because it decides the fate of a motion. Of course, we've all seen in Parliament the voice vote. So there you have the eyes and the nays or the nose and uh, the chairperson compares. And uh, this is not preferred actually in companies as it does not permit exact counting of votes in favour or against. Then show of hands. In case of equal 
votes or apparently equal votes, the chairperson may exercise the casting vote either way. But he or she, if he does not, he or she does not use the casting vote, the motion is lost. Proxy voting cannot happen here, here as the voting has to be done by show of hands only. Then there is the standing vote. In the case of voting by show of hands in a large gathering, there is a possibility that some members may raise both the hands and create confusion. So, to avoid this possibility, standing vote is preferable. So, the chairperson requests the members voting in favour of the motion to stand and then their number is counted. Then there is of course division. Under this method, when the motion is put to vote, then the chairperson asks the members to form themselves into two groups, one favouring the motion and the other against the motion. So they may assemble in two different sides of the meeting hall or go to two different rooms. And again, proxy is not possible. But this method is very time consuming and disturbs the sitting arrangement. So you have the poll where everybody, every member with a voting right may deliver his vote or her vote to an appointed officer either orally or in writing. It's better to do it in writing and then all the counting happens. And uh, the a poll may be conducted under the following circumstances. When the members are not satisfied with the result of show of hands, they can demand an immediate poll as per the bylaws. The rules so demand that the poll be taken on any or all important issues listed in the agenda. If the, chair, if the rules do not prohibit, the chairperson himself or herself may decide on a poll if he or she deems it necessary. What are the advantages of taking a poll? You get the sense of the meeting with greater accuracy. Where the numbers of voters is very large, then all can take part. The absentee members can cast their vote through proxies if the bylaws so permit. Where the proxies are allowed, the voting reflects the shareholding strength. Then you come to the minutes of meeting. This is basically to preserve the memory of anything. There are written record of the proceedings conducted in a meeting, the business that is transacted, the decisions that are taken, the resolutions that are arrived at. And there are two kinds of minutes. One is minutes of decisions. Here, uh, the discussion is omitted and only the final decisions are minuted. Okay, so resolve that or it was resolved that. It normally, as I said, is in the affirmative form. And um, then you have minutes of narration. Then here you record the business covered in the meeting, including the discussion and the arguments in favor or against a particular pro uh, proposition. The number of voters cast for and against a motion. So this is a more detailed version of the minutes, but and probably required in some sort of meetings where the discussion is very important. But normally uh, in most companies, the minutes of decisions are taken more than minutes of narration. What are the objectives of a meeting? As we all know, human memory is short. It's not possible to remember all that transpires or is decided after a lapse of some time. So to avoid any dispute in future, the recording of minutes is imperative. There are also a permanent record of the resolutions passed or the decisions taken which show an empirical progress of the body or organization. They are acceptable as legal documentary evidence in courts of law in connection with any matter. So if there's any litigation, you have the minutes. And it is obligatory on the part of every registered body to have a record of the proceedings 
of their respective meetings. So, the minutes uh, for the minutes and the recording of the minutes, it has to comply with the legal requirements as well. Now, drafting of the minutes. So, it is the responsibility of the secretary to get the minutes and these minutes have to be eventually approved by the chairperson. So, it must be methodical and business-like. They have to be brief besides factual and free from ambiguity. So, they should set out exactly what was transacted at the meeting. Exact words of resolution should be recorded to avoid any subsequent misinterpretation. If no conclusion is reached on any item at the meeting, it should be clearly mentioned. It should include the names of movers and seconders, the manner of voting, the results of voting. They should be written in past tense, third person and generally, as I said earlier, in affirmative form, superfluous words should be avoided. So, no purple phrases here. Minutes should not contain any matter which is defamatory to somebody, anything which is irrelevant or immaterial to the meeting or detrimental to the organizations. Arguments should not, which if they are placed in the minutes, should not show any bias or partiality towards any person or group. They should follow the same sequence of items as given in the agenda or exact order in which the business took place. Then there is a minute book which should be properly bound and minute should be, uh, should mention what kind of meeting it is, subcommittee meeting, board meeting, annual meeting, general meeting, so on. It should indicate the date, time and place of meeting. It should give names of presiding officers, people who attended, people who were absent and all headings and subheadings should be serially numbered. If there is any reference to a letter or report or statement that should be documented. All decisions on items relating to financial statements, accounts, appointments of officers and other employees made, salaries de decided upon, any of such things should be all recorded separately as they appear in the agenda with no element of vagueness, no ambiguity or scope of double interpretation. The exact text of each resolution should be recorded and it of course ends with a vote of thanks to the chair. A circulation of the minutes is not statutory but members wish to have it. Members who could not attend the meeting get to know what happened at the meeting. Members who attended the meeting may be prepared to point out whether the minutes have been correctly recorded or not and it saves uh, time in the next meeting because the chairperson can always say Okay, since the minutes of the previous meeting has been circulated among the members, they will be taken as read. So, the secretary does not have to read the minutes. Thank you very much.